previously on Seek as a Construct. I know nothing about these things, so you're going to have to kind of explain to the audience and me what these are. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek as a Construct. And every once in a while you might see my face on camera in these episodes, but mostly uh, there'll be audio and uh, the, I'm trying to keep them under 10 minutes, uh, but sometimes I go on these rants and stuff and I can't edit them down. So, you know, I'm working on it. It's a work in progress. Uh, but in this episode, I promise you more Moon Knight material because I really, really enjoyed the show. And I knew dipping into the comics, I wouldn't read anything that was quite like the show because obviously the show approached the character from a very specific point of view, but it's one that I really connected with. And I understand a lot of people out there maybe didn't or thought it was too you know, slow paced or too character focused and not enough action and not enough Moon Knight in it. And I can understand that criticism absolutely. But for me, the show worked on a massive level because of the performance by Oscar Isaac, who I thought really committed to that character. And we've talked about that with Tom Hardy on the, you know, the Venom blog, where that kind of stuff really pulls me in. When I see someone that dedicated to a character that I think most actors wouldn't have dedicated that that much to, you know, uh, you see some of these characters, they are actors nowadays, they really want to transform and become these characters. But for a long time, comic book characters weren't taken that seriously. And so it's nice to see when actors do approach it from a very serious standpoint and try to ground it or give it their all at least. And that's what I liked about Oscar's performance. So it pulled me into this character. And so because of that, I had this on my birthday wish list. And uh, actually my mom bought it for me. <laughs> my mom and brother uh, hooked me up with this and they sent it to me uh, through Amazon. And I'm glad they did because I have the little uh, digest spider, you know, it's not spider verse, but it's like Marvel verse. And it has like some stories in there of, you know, Moon Knight, his first appearance and stuff. And we'll get into those for sure. I want to review that book uh, that, you know, once I finish it, because right now I'm on the last story, which has King the Conqueror in it. So I'll definitely make a video about that Marvelverse book. And that'll go through the origins, at least, or the first appearances of Moon Knight, or some, at least one of them. And then also some stories throughout his years. But this one is the current run. And I was like hesitant. You know, when I got this, I was like, okay, I'm nervous. It was on my list. But at the same time, like, you know, Jed McKay, who's the writer of it, um, I liked some of Jed's stuff and some of it I haven't, you know, and I'm like, all right, so what, what side of Jed am I going to see on this one? Am I going to really like what Jed brings to this story? And, uh, and am I going to, you know, connect to this like I did the show? Well, I didn't really connect to it the way I did the show because this is obviously very comic booky, but I still really enjoyed what Jed is doing with this book. And I really really like the artwork and I don't want to mess up the artist's name, um, Alessandro uh, Cappuccio, uh, who is the artist and Rachel Rosenberg, who does the colors. I mean, what a dynamic team, honestly, like this is the book looks fantastic. And some of the covers we're getting from Steve McNiven on the main series is great too. But reading this and, and having like artwork that looks really clean, like this really straight lines, like a uh, very good shading, very good, uh, you know, uh, color schemes, you know, the mood, the, you know, everything, even from just someone sitting in an office, uh, you know, which I hate, I hate when people sit at desks and talk and stuff, but uh, this one is is set up for that. They have, you know, um, Mark, uh, who is now talking to a psychiatrist and and that's part of the story. So I was kind of like, all right, I don't like when people just sit and talk, like it's uh, sitting in chairs and talking. I feel like that kind of is a waste of an artist's talent when they can draw amazing things, amazing fight scenes. Um, but I also know you got to pace that out with stuff to rein that in. But you also don't want to overwhelm your artist with just nonstop action because they're going to, you know, they're going to burn out, you know. And then also you want quieter scenes because these are could be a little easier to draw and get through. Um, but still the angles like they do good jobs with the angles. And I've, I've said this before, with Ryan Stegman, like even though sometimes Donnie will have these four or five page conversation scenes. Sometimes Ryan will do these angles or, or make it look semi interesting and or make it look fully interesting and, and sell me on it. And I'm like, OK, some of this I can I can get around, but I also feel like some of it can be trimmed. This is one of those where they do put a lot of dialogue on a page so that they get through those exposition scenes faster. And they're not even really exposition scenes uh, to an extent. They're really just Mark tr kind of explaining his mission, which that's the exposition part. But it's also him. Um, understanding and they also the psych uh, the you know, psychiatrist that's working with him understanding what his new mission is um, but also him getting feelings out there that are uh, that play out in the story so uh, so it's kind of like uh, the sopranos in a way um, so I, I kind of like that I, I thought that was this has been really well done so far 
and you get these great fight scenes. So the mission that uh, Moon Knight is in is he has now become a priest for Khonshu. Now, I haven't read the Avengers story that deals with Khonshu, apparently who tried to take over the world or something. Um, now Mark is free from Khonshu, but he still has the Moon Knight abilities and powers, which I'm kind of curious how that works. Uh, but uh, but I'm sure they'll get to it in the in this in the book at some point. But he's going around and he's like circled off this one area of New York and put these moon logos on street corners. And he's basically like, okay, if you come into this area, I'll mess you up. You're not going to hurt anyone in this area of town. Um, and I'm going to representing the fist of Conchu. I'm going to take you down. So there's this like Vermin, a Spider-Man villain who was cloned, you know, uh, numerous times and found ways to clone himself. He's coming here to eat people, and Moon Knight shows up and is like, look, I know who you are, I know you're vermin, I know you're, you clone yourself, you're a Spider-Man villain, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not Spider-Man. I will straight up kill all of you. So since you try to eat someone here, I kill one of yours. And if you want to make sure none of the rest of you die, you better go in the sewer and find, like, dog crap or something to eat. Uh, because if you come up here again, I'm taking you all out. And so, uh, so it's basically Moon Knight laying the law down in his neck of the woods of the city. And like I said, the artwork is just fantastic. I really, really love everything that's being drawn and uh, and the visuals of this book. Um, but I like the mission. And it's him going around. He's like with a chainsaw killing zombies. Uh, vampires show up at one point in the book. And he uh, actually saves one of the vampires, a couple of them, uh, because they're innocent. He's like, look, you know, you're travelers of the night too. That's what I protect. And even though you're vampires, you were turned and you were innocent. And you haven't fed off, you know, you know, human blood. You haven't killed anybody to feed. Uh, we got like fake DNA or you know, a synthetic DNA that we can feed you, um, you know, from my years of you know hunting monsters and stuff and knowing people like Blade and other characters. Um, we can uh, and Morbius, like we can make synthetic blood for you to feed off of. But uh, but you got to fight that urge. You know, we're gonna we're gonna either try to cure you at some point or um, or just get you through this. So he saved a couple vampires, young kids or like teenagers, early twenties, you know, something like that. And he has some of them working for him, uh, you know, and helping him, you know, keep an eye on the area. And meanwhile, there's a villain who's like watching his every move. And then there's another uh, uh, adversary that shows up called Hunter's Moon, who claims that he's the other fist of Conchu. He's like, yeah, you're, you know, you're Mark Spector Moon Knight. You're the, the fist of Conchu, but you're one fist. You're the right fist. I'm the left fist, basically. And, uh, and so that character shows up. And I didn't think I would like him at first because the way they introduced him. But by the end of this book, I actually really did like Hunter's Moon, and I kind of like seeing where this might go, uh, you know, moving forward. Um, and there's a lot of cool villains that show up in this. One guy who can possess, you know, people and, and control their minds, and he turns like a whole building against, you know, uh, Moon Knight and stuff. And it's so Moon Knight has to pull his punches because when he's punching people, it's like elderly people that live in this, you know, house uh, or this uh, this apartment building. Um, but then there's a lot of transformations between Mark, Moon Knight, and Stephen, you know, Mr. Knight. Although that's not how it's handled in the comic. So every time I see Mr. Knight, I, I just imagine a British accent coming out of him because of the show. But it's uh, that's not how it is. Like, he's still Mark, uh, you know, when he's going between the costumes, it seems. But when he's in the Mr. Knight suit, that's when he's kind of the priest of Conchu. And so he's leading a congregation, is what he calls it. Uh, so I'm, I'm loving that. And then you get this great fight between Moon Knight and Hunter's Moon. And I don't want to spoil too much more about what's in this book or who Hunter's Moon is or who the villain that's tracking Mark is. Um, but all that does get revealed by the end. And you get, uh, you know, you get your, your, your reveals and your you know, explanations and stuff. Um, and you also get great, even just moments like this where he's sitting, he sleeps in a, a, a carcophagus, um, and then he also has the, the Conchu statue behind him. And so, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just neat. Yeah, but he's like sleeping in this tomb uh, at night, um, um, Moon Knight is. And I'm like, okay, that's a little like uh, campy and silly, but I kind of like that sometimes. So it worked for me. Um, but yeah, and like I said, this is just cool shots, really well done colors, tone wise i mean it's great and there's differences like when he's out there at night fighting the way they use like light you know behind him and kind of make the room a little have like a jaundice green feel but then when he's in with the psychiatrist it's kind of warm colors and the sun is coming through the window and it's like a purple couch and a uh, purple red couch and stuff it's like more warm colors i just like the contrast like they're rachel is doing the colors on this and uh, and the artist alessandro is like they're really great at uh, making this feel um different from scene to scene i mean even a scene like this where 
you know, Moon Knight's sitting at a table with an old lady talking to her. Um, and it's just like really well done. And it's, uh, it's very simple. Like they, the shots are very simple. But then, you know, the next uh, scene when he gets uh, into the fight scenes, they get complicated. And it's him running around, you know, fighting. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I like this book overall. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it when I was reading it. Um, we were going into it, but I'm glad I put this on my list and I'm glad I, I got it to read. And I read it in one sitting, went right through and just enjoyed it that much. Uh, the artwork was fantastic and Jed's writing is really, really good. And I can't wait to see what volume two will bring. I think volume two will be coming out in like two months or something like that. So I'll definitely pick that up and read that as well. So I won't be buying these monthly, you know, in, in single issue form, but I will buy them as they come out and trade, uh, definitely, um, and in physical form. And we'll, you know, bring those to you guys as well. And I think I'm going to be buying the Omnibus, uh, the Moon Knight Omnibus. I have to move soon. So there's going to be some changes to the channel and, and there might be another lull where I don't make any content. Um, but I'll let you know when that comes and when we're nearing that point, but it probably will in the next month or two. Uh, I have to get out of here in like two months from this apartment. Um, they're just raising my rent way too high for me to afford anymore. And so I'll be looking, I'm looking at, at places now and I'll be moving soon. So once I get settled into the new place, I can get back to a, a routine hopefully. Um, and then hopefully work will, you know, stop surprising me with the amount of changes I've been going through over there and we can get things back to a, a routine. And that's, that's what I want, but it's been crazy right now. I've been working harder to kind of prove myself um, at work to try to, you know, hopefully get maybe a, a chance at a promotion since I got passed up last time. So I'm doing my best. I want them to see that I'm trying to take everything seriously, but uh, I want to, you know, I, I hopefully it is all worth it in the end. And hopefully, uh, you know, I get something that I want that will help my life be easier if I can make some more money um, and, and have, you know, some stability and routine at work. That would be nice. So, uh, so yeah, fingers crossed for that. But for Moon Knight stuff, I will have more content soon on this show on Seek as a Construct, and I'll have some other videos coming up very soon as well. So thank you so much. If you've read this book, let me know what you think down below. And if you haven't, I highly recommend checking it out. I think you can pick up the digital copy. The physical one's only like 17 bucks um, in print for this, uh, you know, but if on Amazon, I think you can get it for like 14. Um, you can get it at your local comic book store also, and uh, or on Comixology, uh, where I think it's like $9.99 or $8.99 for the trade. Uh, and in, you know, digital form. So either way, I highly recommend it. I thought this was fun and I can't wait to see where the story goes next. And if you have thoughts that are similar or different or just regular Moon Knight thoughts in general, let me know down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.